And now Jane Fonda, her first major television interview in five years. Someone said once that her life has been a mirror of America's contradictions as she careened from political flamethrower to trendsetter in exercise tights. Always talented, provocative, always interesting. Contributing correspondent Nancy Collins talked with the Jane Fonda of the 1990s, now married to media mogul Ted Turner, and seeing life in a whole new way. People say to me, how could you have left movie making? I mean, it was my life. I work, therefore I am. But I think about it now and I, I, I test myself. Do I really miss it? I don't. I can't imagine any movie that I ever made or could make in the future that is, would be worth giving up the three months of being with Ted. That's right. Jane Fonda wants you to know that she's given up movies for good. And not only that, the world's most liberated actress has given them up for a man. This man, Ted Turner. He's the one-man juggernaut who, well, caroused onto the scene in the late 70s after winning the America's Cup. I've never raced against such good sportsmen as my friends from the west of Australia. He's brash, sexist, conservative. Yet the woman who once called herself a revolutionary now calls herself Mrs. Ted Turner. They were married in 1991. I think people were stunned by that because so rarely does Me that too. <laughs> hey, I mean, what I'd heard about him, I thought, oh, man. And I mean, he's from the South. You know, Southern men, they're not used to having partners. No. And, and my, he's rolled with the punches. I mean, he's, you know, first thing he said to me when we went out, he said, you know, I was raised a male chauvinist pig. And, and uh, he, you know, he believes in women's rights, but it's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to have to live it. Oh, exactly. And he's done great. We, as outsiders, look at Ted and Jane as having a sexy marriage. Well, we're not going to do a movie about our marriage. No, but you sure. get Nobody my... believe it. They wouldn't? No. Why? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun, or what? Yeah. Yeah? Well... Next question. But if the new Jane Fonda seems surprising, friends say that feminist or not, she often becomes a lot like the man she loves. Some say she spent a lifetime trying to get the attention of her famously remote father. After all, she's gone through so many incarnations, on screen and off. Sex kitten. Great American actress. Why do you have to be such a bastard? loose cannon in the protest against the Vietnam War. I think that anyone who believes and or who says that the anti-war movement prolonged the war needs their head examined. When she gave her last major TV interview five years ago, she was on the verge of a bitter divorce. But the 90s Jane has bounced back with a new attitude and a brand new look. I mean, I'm 55 and a half years old, you know, but I care about how I look. You know, I have lots of Younger women say to me, my God, my mother is your age. I can't believe it. But I work hard at it. And, and um, you know, it, it doesn't come naturally. Speaking of what comes naturally, Fonda says she's never liked her body. When I was coming up as a young actress, Susie Parker, sunken cheeks, great cheekbones and all that, she was like considered the great beauty. So the director of my first movie wanted me to have my jaw broken so that my teeth would, my cheeks would sink in and pull my, my teeth out. I mean, it... it Did you ever you know, consider doing that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's... You, you always think you're not good enough. And, by the way, she wouldn't talk about those rumors around for years that she's had a lot of plastic surgery. Fonda's insecurity began in childhood. When she was 12, her mother died. She was told it was a heart attack. But a year later, Jane learned from a movie magazine that her mother had committed suicide. Jane took it hard. I suffered from, from an eating disorder, from bulimia, and I, I didn't like myself, and I worried about being thin enough. Bulimia, a disease that forces its victims to eat and then purge compulsively. How do you think you got bulimic? What was... I have no idea. I mean, I... I I can't really answer it intelligently. It's a, it's, doctors don't even know. And it's also, a, it's, it's a disease of, um, of secrecy. Mm. The people closest to you never know. That's why even her first two husbands didn't know. Roger Vadim, the French director, 
and Tom Hayden, the political activist and member of the Chicago 7. They married in 1973. Were you working out while you were bulimic, though? I mean, oh. were you physical exercise? Oh. You know, you can see us types in the classes. I mean, I can see them now. We're super thin, and we work out three or four times a day harder than anyone else mm -hmm. while we don't eat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's like alcoholism or drug addiction. It has nothing to do with whether we're good people or not. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with how strong characters we have. I'm a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. I don't know what causes it, mm -hmm. but it's, um, it's a disease that needs ser you know, attention and, and help. And, mm -hmm. And that's the only reason I talk about it. It's not easy to talk about it. Fonda says her bulimia lasted for 22 years, during which she starred in 22 movies. And all the while she binged, purged, and she says almost died. In 1973, at age 35, she finally conquered bulimia by herself, cold turkey. What finally made you decide that it was enough? A choice between life and death. Really? Literally. I mean, either I'm going to be able to live a life that I'm proud of and accomplishing the things I want to accomplish, or I'm, I'm going to um, allow this uh, disease to overtake my life. And, and, uh, and it, 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 took me, it took me about a year to, um, to get to where I could sit down at a meal and, and not be filled with anxiety. In the late very, very 70s, difficult. Fonda found a better way to win the body I, I game, aerobics. But, and aerobics would make her richer and more famous than all of her movies combined. What did you need that moment that aerobics supplied? <laughs> well, right at that moment, I needed to do a bikini scene in California Suite. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Right. Your friend's about a size too small for me. In the beginning, I was very wary. What are people going to think when they go to see my movies if they've been looking at me doing buttock tucks? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Meryl Streep doesn't do buttock tucks. Right. And, and I was scared that it was going to cannibalize my movie career. Here we go now. Instead, it got her a new gig, exercise videos. They've raked in $300 million in sales. Her latest is her greatest hits called Fonda's Favorite Fat Burners, my most popular and easiest to follow routines but money didn't buy everything. In 1989, her marriage to Tom Hayden crumbled. Not long after, Ted Turner called her up. Tom Hayden and my first husband were our strong, brilliant men. It's just that I wasn't in that place then. Ted, I needed to prove myself. But Ted's Ted needs, needs a woman who's proved herself. I, I was still proving myself. And what does Jane need in, in from Ted? Tenderness, feeling safe, the ability to trust him, being heard. It's pretty amazing that we met in our 50s, both of us successful, very independent, used to running our own lives, and that we can make it work. How much time have you all been separated since you've been married? The most? Yeah. Two days. Are you kidding? Yeah. That's remarkable, Jane. It's different. Careers in the entertainment business are very difficult on marriages, and I decided I've done that. I've had that. I know I can do that. I'm not so sure that I can do what I always knew that I should do, which is just slow down. And Ted said to me in the beginning, he said, cut what you're doing in half, and I did. And then he said, and about six months later, try cutting it in half again, and I did. Do you really think you'll never act again? I don't know. I don't think about it. I don't really care. Frankly. Truly. Truly. Uh-huh. Do you get scripts and so forth? Not anymore. Although, I got offered, yeah, I mean, my agent called me the other day for a very important role. I mean, he just couldn't believe I said no. He said, but you don't understand, this is a great gig. This is, I said, no. When that role came in the other day, did you turn around and off the phone and say, Ted, I just turned down? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I want him to be very aware. <laughs> but I, I ask myself, I test myself all the time. You know, I see my, my friends, Sally Field and... Jessica Lang and, and I think, do I feel envious? And I don't. I, God, I wake up some mornings and I think, oh, thank God I don't have to care about how I look. Thank God I don't have to say somebody else's words. Good glare can be just as effective as a gun. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I saw Line of Fire last night, right? Know what I mean? And I'm looking at Clint Eastwood. Oh, he's so good in it. Best acting I've ever seen him do. And I'm thinking, if a woman was that ravished, she would never, A, have a, well, she could have a lead role, but it would never have sex as part of it. Never. You know, whereas he's still a sex figure. 
Is that changing at all? No, in America? it How? never will. It, it never, never will. I don't think it ever will. Why not, Jane? Because we don't look for the same things in guys. I don't think it's going to change, and I don't think we should cry about it. We should just be sure that we're really good character actresses and keep going in other ways. What are you afraid of nowadays? Mm, getting hurt. Emotionally? No. No, physically. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want Ted to have to take care of... We're so active. We, we have so much fun. At my age, you think about these things. My workouts, you ask me what's different about my workouts, they're slower. Mm -hmm. I don't lift as much weights, those kinds of things. You know, you, just, you, you pay more attention to staying well. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid of death? No, no. I, when my father, I mean, I, I'm not looking forward to dying, but, oh. but I learned when my father was, was dying that what I'm afraid of is not death itself, it's getting to death with a lot of, why didn't I do and why didn't I tell? Do you think you were able to say everything to your father before he died? Mm, yeah, I said it. I said everything. Uh, oh, my greatest regret, though, is that he's not alive because I'd be such a better daughter now. I could come to him with much more understanding, but also he liked Ted so much. Do you think? Oh, he was so shy. See, Ted talks so much. <laughs> picking it up from him, that he would have kept Dad entertained, and besides, they would have loved to fish together. Miss Barclay! Conrad! Room 801. Once they were in love, in love with...